Hello everyone, my name is EK and last time we talked about the basics of League of Legends and the main way to win the game. Today we are broadening the scope a little bit and I'll be talking about the major objectives teams can take to secure their leads and win the game. First off, let's quickly remember that in order to reach the enemy base, you need to destroy their turrets. What I did in fact not mention is that turrets also give local gold which is gold shared amongst people who are physically at the tower when it dies. And it also gives global gold, providing a bit of gold to everyone on the team, regardless of their position on the map. One final layer to the turret gold system is that the first tower on every one of three lanes has plates in place that will be broken as you damage the turret. Each plate taken gives local gold to players around the turret. Turrets have five plates, and taking them all gives a substantial amount of gold to the team taking them, as well as there being a bonus gold system for the first team that takes a turret. Finally, these plates fall off at 14 minutes into the game, and the turret becomes a lot squishier. The plates at that point are removed and can no longer be destroyed for gold. All of these layers may sound like a lot of information, but I am confident this basic overview of them should be pretty clear when looking at the pro game and seeing gold pop up on the screen. Moving on, let's talk about an objective on the map that closely ties in with turrets, this being the Rift Herald. A neutral objective that is acquired by the team that lands the last hit. You'll often hear her being called Shelly by the casters as it's often used as her nickname. She takes pretty low damage but sometimes opens up her eye on the back that you can then hit for massive damage. Killing her gives some local gold to the team that killed her and drops an item called the Eye of the Herald. This is an item that can be picked up by a team member of the team that killed her and is grabbed by standing on it for a short duration. It stays in the ground for 20 seconds and then disappears if not picked up. This item temporarily replaces your trinket. Now, if you don't know what a trinket is, don't worry, I'll cover it in a future video. While it has replaced your trinket, this player has the ability to summon the Herald once. When summoned, the Herald will push the closest lane and charge a turret if near one. This results in massive damage to the turret and potentially turret plates being secured for the team as well. It is worth noting that she can charge multiple turrets in a row if not stopped by the enemy team, potentially resulting in a very large push when ignored. She spawns 8 minutes into the game, meaning you have 6 minutes to get the most value out of it. This is because turrets with plating on them are more valuable and as mentioned before, they fall off at 14 minutes. A second Rift Herald will spawn if the first one is killed before 13 minutes and 45 seconds into the game. If a second one spawns, but it is not killed before 1945, she will automatically despawn and make room for a bigger objective, known as Baron Nasha. From now on, referred to as Baron. Baron is a much bigger objective than the Herald and spawned in the pit where the Rift Herald used to be. Killing Baron is a much more challenging task, as the damage taken by the team attempting the kill is much higher. There's also always the risk of a steal by the enemy team, because just like Herald, the last hit gets the kill. There is also no pickup required after landing the kill, as the entire team that secures the Baron kill gets gold and a very powerful buff immediately, known as the Hand of Baron, which lasts for 3 minutes. I'll be referring to that buff as the Baron buff from now on, because that is the term used by most people. The Baron buff does 3 things for your team. First off, it simply grants your entire team more damage which simply makes winning future fights a lot easier. Secondly, it gives the entire team an empowered recall. This greatly reduces the time players need to teleport back to their base. Recalling isn't something we discussed so far in this series, but it is simply pressing a button and you get a channel. And after finishing this channel, you will be teleported to your base. You can be interrupted with damage while recalling, which will then just simply stop the cast. It's also worth noting that the Rift Herald also grants this buff to the player holding it. The third and definitely biggest benefit from the Baron buff 
is the automatic buff you give any minions near you. So we talked about minions being a very vital part, pushing down turrets, and giving them the Baron buff by being close means they deal more damage and are harder to kill. This greatly improves a team's ability to take down enemy turrets. There are ways to further utilize this by having people in multiple lanes, allowing all of those lanes to be buffed up by the buff. However, this is far too in-depth for this particular video. It's also worth noting that when a player dies while holding the Baron buff, as opposed to the Rift Herald, the Baron buff is lost for that player. Baron also respawns five minutes after being killed, meaning there can be several Barons being taken in one singular game if the team with Baron buff was not able to secure a victory already. One minor objective worth noting is a creature known as the Rift Scuttler. There are two of them, and they move through the river and do not deal damage, so they are not a threat to any players. And when killed, grant temporary vision on important areas to the team that killed her. One of them provides vision on the Rift Herald and Baron Pit, which, as we talked about before, is the same area. The other provides vision for the Dragon Pit. Now, dragons are the final objective I want to briefly talk about in this video in order to not make this one too long. Uh, basically, they are neutral objectives, similar to Herald and Baron, but they provide permanent buffs. There are, however, multiple different dragons, and they do affect the map in some ways, meaning that this topic is way too big and deserves its own video. Alright, there are many things I didn't cover here. There are many things I scrapped from this video. I tried to keep it as top level as possible to make sure you understand what's going on and what these objectives are. And I hope I did a, a good job in that. My next video probably is going to be on dragons so that we have a good overview of all the different objectives. There's also a lot more like, you know, little minor objectives that I might make like a bit of a summary about. Uh, but they're not as big as the ones I talked about today. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope to see you again for the third video. Have a nice day and I'll see you around.